Hello everyone, my name is Frank, and my final project is histogram-based segmentation and detection of malignant tissues on HE stain. First, I want to explain what is HE stain. HA means hematoxylin and E is eosin. And these two chemicals can make the cells to have some color so that it could be easily seen and the microscope by human eyes. Uh, my purpose of the project is that given an HE stain image, we can try to mark the potentially malignant tissues with green color so that it can be easily seen by the directors. Uh, I believe the best way to do this is using neural network, but uh, in this project, um, I only use very basic methods of image process. Uh, I tried different ways to process the image, um, the color image, grayscale image, and black-white image. And I actually get more failure than success on the final product. But the good news is that I got some more uh, successes when I recording this video. Um, the original image is here, and we can see that on the right part, uh, there are malignant tissues. Uh, we can see the cells are irregular, the nucleus of the cell uh, are large and also irregular. But on the left side, uh, there are normal tissues, and the cells at the background, the pink one, uh, they are very regular, and the nucleus of the cell also small and regular. Uh, so the purpose of the project is to mark this irregular part as green color. Uh, okay, this is the grayscale image and the histogram. Histogram, we can see a little bump here, I believe, they are the back nucleus. And the big bump here are the very bright background. Uh, first, I tried the color image process. Uh, I tried the uh, RGB segmentation, HSI segmentation, and also very specifically the HE segmentation. Um, okay, this is the RGB segmentation. I'm sorry. Uh, actually, this is failed because when we see the red channel and the blue channel, they are almost very, uh, they are very even. Uh, even though the red channel is brighter, the blue channel is a little darker, but they, uh, they don't make any sense here. Uh, on the green channel, we could see that um, because we have some white colors here, so the, we have some white ones on green. Um, but when I compare the green channel and the uh, grayscale image, I believe I want to use the grayscale one. Uh, then I tried the HI based, HSI based segmentation. Um, and then I want to get the red channel. So, because I set a very wide range of the red from um, minus pi over 6 to pi over positive pi over 6. So, they are all, they are all the red and uh, red, purple, and pinks go to the red channel. And uh, for the green and the blue ones, we don't. It doesn't make any sense here. Uh, so then I try the HE segmentation. Uh, a lot of articles use ImageG software because this one is used in the medical field a lot. Um, but when I want to use that software, it says I need some special plugin for the HE segmentation. So at that time it failed, but when I tried it last night, it, I got success. So I can, could do some more things on the uh, H, -E, uh, H channel and E channel now. Uh, because that one was failed, so I tried Python. Uh, they give me this, uh, these vectors and said, uh, if you pass the RGB image and the vectors into a function, uh, it will produce each channel and each channel image. And this is from Systematic TK. And uh, I tried that um, because I don't have very much background on Python. Uh, I also failed. So 
But when I look at these uh, these uh, numbers, I thought this one probably probably is the width of the red channel. This one is the width of the green channel, and this one is the width of blue channel. So I apply this number to the three different channels, and I got this image. And uh, well, it looks beautiful, but it's out of field because the real uh, image should not looks like. Uh, you know, too much orange here, too much green here, should not look like that. Then, uh, thanks to uh, uh, thanks to Jacob Cather, uh, he published some uh, uh, decomposition methods on GitHub, and I used his function. I got this one um, because each channel image uh, gives give us more details on the nucleus. We could easily see that the nucleus are here. So uh, we can do some wonderful things on this. Uh, my first thought is to uh, when, uh, is that when we have the nucleus, we can uh, take off all the nucleus in the image. And then we could see all the patterns here. They should be regular. And we could use margin detection, uh, edge detection uh, math technology to mark all these edges, uh, so that we could see that if we have edges like this, it's large and irregular. If we have an edge like this, it should be regular and small. So I want to take off all the nucleus and uh, get all the edges. But since we didn't learn how to get the edges from the color picture, we, I use the green scale pictures. Okay, in this image, I have taken off all the nucleus from the cells. We can see that uh, this part is very large and irregular, and also this part. But here, we can see that it's regular and uh, thinner. So I believe if I use the edge detection algorithm to mark all the edges, we could easily see the differences between these two parts. So I did that, and this is the result. Well, when I apply the Kenny algorithm, it gives me this result. And all the other algorithms, they give me either the noisy picture or a totally black one. So I believe the reason is that when we look clearly at this picture, we have some small black dots in the background. Uh, the other thing is some, uh, we have we should mark the margins here, or they think the whole picture has no margins. So uh, it's filled again, and uh, uh, based on this picture, I want to change all the dark ones to be black and all the uh, lighter ones to be white so that it can easily detect the edges between uh, these two parts so that I give the, uh, this algorithm uh, when I mark everything less than 160 as a nucleus and everything larger than that is the background and we got this without all the nucleus. Uh, okay, all the nucleus actually I give it a white color, and on the background I give it a black color. And when we look at this image, uh, we could see that when we apply erosion, the smaller ones will disappear, and the larger ones should stay there. And then we dilate it. The, only the larger ones will be there. But actually, I feel the game because when we see the, lar uh, the larger nucleus here, they also have some black holes in it. So when I apply erosion first, all of them disappear except a li little, uh, uh, some one here or here, uh, all the other nucleus disappear. So in order to Prevent this. Uh, I apply 
I want to apply the clothes first. And uh, I tried that. If I only use the clothes algorithm dilation and then erosion, it failed because nothing changed. Even though I changed the uh, structuring element size, uh, it failed. Also, if I use a bigger structuring element, for them three by three, it also fails because uh, everything will connect or disappear. And then I tried um, uh, I tried the structure element structuring element uh, on two by two, and I dilated the whole picture uh, three times, and then erode it for three times. Uh, then I got this result. Okay, first I dilate it three times and then erosion it three times. We could see that here on the right side, uh, these white ones are all connected together and which can be easily marked as green at this point. And all these uh, smaller ones here, even though they are connected, but the the whole area won't be as large as uh, this part. So uh, next step, I will use some uh, algorithm to check all the connected areas. And if the areas the air, the area the area of this part uh, is larger than a certain amount, I will mark it as positive and mark all the uh, all the uh, pixels in the original image as greenish color. If the area of this here is smaller than a certain value, I will uh, make it unchanged or mark it as purple. Uh, I haven't done this yet, but I will do it next week. Uh, okay, this one is a Photoshop simulated image. Uh, actually, all these areas are connected here, and all the areas are connected here. So I just uh, clicked about three or four times, I got all the green ones. But for the purple ones, oh, it's very hard to select all those, all those. So in the original image, I will probably only mark the, uh, the irregular ones as green. Um, okay, and uh, next week I will do what I said before, and in the future, probably I can test on different HE images and uh, to see if my algorithm also right. And uh, I can also change the dilation and erosion times based on different images because on this image I dilate three times and then erode it three times. Um, I can change the numbers and to see which one is the best result. Okay, thank you.